Hi YouTube. Just wanted to put together a video <clears throat> sharing my my personal story with Silver, uh, the the start of my channel and and how it's evolved. Um, I hope you guys don't find this too self indulgent. I just really enjoy hearing people tell their stories about how they were introduced to Silver, so I thought I would share mine. Um, you know, in, in two thousand and eight. I got hurt really badly by the financial crisis. Um, that was a time where you know we'd just given we just had our second child a couple of years before, and we were still really adjusting to the you know skyrocketing costs of daycare and and uh, trying to pay for a second child. But you know what? Our investments were doing okay, so you know we felt really good. And for the first time in my life, I felt like. Um, I felt like I'd be able to retire and, and have the kind of nest egg that we had always worked towards. You know, we never made a lot of money, and we, you know, we did live within our means for the most part. But you know, we we made some mistakes with money. Um, I keep this financial journal around. This is from 2008 as a reminder. There's no October 1st, 2008, because that's when it all started to fall apart. I, sh I should have chronicled it, but I was you know, in, in a pretty rough spot. You know, I started seeing everything disappear on me, right? My 401k plan was 55000 That went down to about 28000 by by March. Uh, my savings were at 58000 That went away completely. Um, I used the balance of what was left to pay off some debt, and there, there was still some more debt that remained. Uh, my pension stayed the same. My wife's 401k plan stayed the same. Uh, home equity went away completely. That 70000 evaporated. It, there was zero. So my total assets went from 212000 down to about 50000 So now here I am at 38 years old, and I'm starting over, right? Uh, so so I, I keep this as a reminder. This is the kind of, um, of thing I like to do. So, you know, then, then the story started coming out about, uh, you know, John Thane's lavish pay package while at the same time putting his hand out asking for a bailout, you know, um, the, the, the golden shower curtains and, and all the, the lavish successes that all the executives and all the Wall Street guys were enjoying while they were basically taking chances with their money and losing it and then asking for the taxpayers to bail them out. It, it made my blood boil. You know, to this day... With executive pay packages being what they are, I, I get angry about it. I do. It, I, it's only natural, right? Because, you know, they're not paying their workers any raises or anything, and yet here they are just raking it in. And their excuse will always be, well, the board of directors voted on our pay package. Oh, oh the board of directors. Oh, you mean other CEOs and other uh, wannabe CEOs? Oh, the um, shareholders approved it too. Oh, you mean the fund managers that never rock the boat? You know, it's just, it's so disingenuous, uh, and, and I hate it. You know they're they're looking always looking to ship our jobs overseas, you know to save a few dollars to pad their bonuses. It, it just it irritates me. So I spent the next couple of years licking my wounds, and I was paying down debt, and you know accumulating some too. Again, having that second child really hurt us. So April two thousand and eleven. Fast forward a little bit. Um, now understand, I, I should also say I've ne I'd never considered silver as an investment. Never. Never, never, never. Growing up, it was always five dollars an ounce. Silver stacking wasn't a concept that I had even ever considered. It was just a dead investment. It'd be like, you know, I, I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me ever to to invest in it. But I didn't know where to go. I was starting to lose trust in the stock market. Some of that distrust still remains. So in 2011, I was flying down to see my father. I was going to surprise him for his 60th birthday. And uh, this is right around the time that silver was just going nuts. So it was all over the news. For the first time in my life, silver was all over the news. Right? It went from a side story, you know, up a penny, down a penny, to, wow, it's really skyrocketing. You know, uh, so it went up to $50 an ounce. It was literally right at the high. And I get on the plane, and trust me, my, my wife would verify this. If I am in a baseball stadium, if I go to Fenway Park, trust me, I'm going to sit next to the drunkest, loudest guy in the whole park. If I go to a concert, I'm going to sit, to the, sit next to the most obnoxious guy in the stadium. It, it's a rule. So when I sit down in my seat, a guy sits down next to me, and, and usually I kind of want to be left alone on something like this. And the guy I was sitting next to 
wouldn't have have any of it. Um, he, he put a couple feelers out about Silver, and I was like, well, okay, you know, he, he's got a captive audience here because we have a three-hour flight, and why not? Let's discuss Silver. So once he realized that I was willing to listen, the floodgates opened up. Okay, this is a guy who, he, pretty remarkable guy. He had a nice uh, place in Vermont that was completely off the grid. Had his own solar power, had his own well, the whole nine yards. Didn't have to rely on anybody. And he had a nice silver stock pile. And he was discussing to me that he had been talking to friends and family for years. And that at $50 an ounce, they were finally asking him about it. Oh, uh, it's that whole silver thing. Uh, is that something that you're still doing? And he said, and finally, people would listen to him. So he had this book that he gave me, right? He said he had these rounds. They were church rounds. And uh, this is the church. I, I, I'm not even going to try to pretend that I can pronounce that because I can't. But they have a website, uh, mej.com. It, it's, it's, a, it's a new church. It's a, it's a subset of Christianity. And what this book is, is this takes a lot of what we know as silver stackers because we've all done the research. But it looks at it through a bi biblical lens, through a, through a true historic lens. And I told him, you know, he said, I, I either give these rounds out and they had these beautiful, I mean, just absolutely gorgeous, uh, I, I, I call them medj, it's M-E-J, medj rounds. And they were for the church. And he said, yeah, he, he said, um, they charge a small premium over spot and, and for the members, they, they get these silver rounds. And he said, I, I try to judge people um, whether or not they would be better served by getting a, a round or by getting this book. And he said, I'm choosing to give you this book. So I, I thanked him, and I went down to my, my parents' house, and I started to read it. And boy, it was, it was really fascinating. You know, it, it told the story, and it's the silver story, again, that we've, you know, the, the, the supply, demand, the, the whole nine yards, the, the historical view of silver, silver is money for thousands of years, and it really just started to click with me. As soon as I pay off the remainder of my debt, I need to start buying some silver. And then I started, the whole concept of being a silver stacker really started to uh, appeal to me. So then I went, I went to YouTube, and of course the first thing that you find is, is Chris Dwayne. I mean, you can't get into silver without, um, without coming across Chris Dwayne videos. And I, I watched him. I watched him all. Now, I'll be honest, guys. His viewpoint is more extreme than mine. No question about it. I mean, I, I can't even, you know, I, I can't even get that out with this. You know, it, yes, his viewpoint is a lot more extreme than mine. That doesn't matter. It's still well worth listening to. Now, he's kind of created a cottage, cottage industry here, and, and he can't go back, right? Um, because if he did, then he would be kind of discredited. So I do often wonder if in a quiet moment he has any doubts. I don't know. I don't know if he'd, if he'd admit that. So anyway, uh, that was just getting sidetracked. I, I also watched these just incredible stacks of silver. I had never even thought of buying all this gorgeous silver bullion, and I didn't even know, know uh, what the Perth Mint was or anything like that. You know, I was thinking about uh, Franklin Half Dollars and Walking Liberties. So we started buying silver, uh, my son and I. You know, I started out with, uh, like, Franklin Proof Halves and Proof Sets and, and American Silver Eagles, and then I started branching out. And then last summer, my, uh, my son said, you know, can we ever make a silver video? And I said, well, that's great, buddy, but we don't have a video camera. Well, shortly after, my wife had said, you know, we really should get a video camera for the kids, uh, for our son's Little League and for our daughter's ballet. I was like, okay, sounds good, because I knew in the back of my mind I also wanted to make silver videos. So I put my first silver video up. It was basically my one-year stacking anniversary video. <clears throat> it, was, it was pretty well received. I mean, but then again, people like looking at silver, and people like hearing people's, uh, you know, baptism into silver. So... You know, there certainly wasn't anything controversial about it. It was just simply, you know, the last year I've been buying silver and here's what I have. And I've, you know, been making some sacrifices to do it. And it, it really caught on. There was a lot of people that started watching it. And I started getting some really uh, kind feedback. So it kind of put in my mind, well, I'd like to do this more. But I was looking at other videos and, man, it was fierce. 
I mean, there was a lot of angry people posting on these videos, you know, are arguing back and forth and name calling. And I'm like, whoa, is this what, what it's all about? Is this what precious metals investors are all about? I mean, I had always thought about gold bugs and, and everything else and, you know, how they were painted and anti-government and angry. And I, I saw these videos, and I'm like, wow, I don't know if I want to do this. I mean, I, I put a video out, and suddenly people are starting to, you know, call each other vicious names back and forth. This doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, I'm just not really wired that way. I mean, I, I hate to say this. I mean, look, extreme viewpoints will get more eyeballs to videos. I mean, there's no question about it. And and that's one thing that Raw Dog does really well. And when people um, actually insult his appearance, I cringe a little bit. And, and that... You know, I guess that makes me a little bit wishy-washy. I just, I don't operate that way. I, I don't really see the need to, you know, bring it down to that level. But, you know, it's all in fun, too. I, I, bet, he, I bet a part of him enjoys it. That's just the way that he's wired. So I put out a second video just showing more silver. Because really, at that point, that's really all I, I, all I know that, knew that I would do. And, you know, the subscribers, they slowly come, right? If you, if you start doing silver videos you'll start accumulating subscribers. You start making connections. And I remember uh, Silvermad actually sent me my first uh, note, and it was just a simple hi. And, you know, he just basically introduced himself. And, uh, you know, I still have that because it was, like, my first contact on YouTube. And then slowly but surely, I started to make a couple more videos. Um, I realized that a lot, lot of what I do... Um, people could may actually connect with that. You know, some of the, the goal setting things that I like to do or the alternate ways that I try to make a little bit of money because, you know, there's a lot more people out there like me than not that are just struggling, that are just looking for ways to make a little bit of extra money and build some savings. That's all. You know, and, and you know, I quickly realized that um, maybe a, a bit of a more moderate point of view will be more appealing to some people because maybe they were turned off by some of the, you know, the angry back and forth that I was. So as I put out more and more videos, um, the subscribers just kept coming. And I remember at one time, um, it was Veritas Files that, you know, sent me a note and he, and he basically said something to the effect of, just so you know, you're, you're actually being talked about by other people. And that just kind of blew my mind. I was like, really? Me? <laughs> it just... It was really hard to kind of, uh, you know, wrap my head around. You know, I exchanged some really, really um, great PMs, making making contacts with people. Um, you know, e EQ Silver comes to mind. You know, it just um, really, really nice, um, you know, personal messages uh, back and forth. And you start making connections with people, and you realize that, you know, this is getting bigger than I thought ever thought it would. You know, and, and so it, it kind of drives you to um, get creative and, and try to put a, a, a video message out that people want to listen to. And, you know, it, suddenly a community is formed and you find yourself uh, spending time, with, with, you know, with, with you guys, right, by going to your channels and, and checking out your videos and, and, and seeing the, the level of excitement. So, you know, what I hope to do is basically keep doing more of the same. I, I hope that, uh, you know, we're able to carry this through out the whole year and a lot of you guys hang with me and, uh, you know, we get the most out of our stacks by the end of the year and then we carry it into next year. It's just been a great ride. And that is why I look at, you know, the moment that that guy sat next to me on the plane as a transitional moment in my life. You know, I, there's a lot of those, right? You look, you think about the first time that you met your wife, the first time that you chose your career, you, when you found out your wife is pregnant, all this stuff, they're, they're transitional moments. And I, I really rank the moment that that guy sat down next to me as yet another transitional moment in my life. Because you know what? If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here doing this. So, so that's my story, guys. And, uh, you know, a little bit different than, a little bit different tone than yesterday's video. Um, boy, that created a lot of conversation. Good stuff, you know? I, I like the guys coming on and defending Raw Dog because, you know, I wasn't, um, Take, I wasn't taking shots at him necessarily. I was just simply saying that I didn't like that he was spinning arguments in a way to make us look foolish. He was refuting points that people weren't making, I guess is, is the best way to put it. So, you know, and I'm, I appreciate the, uh, the back and forth, and I appreciate the guys that came on and, uh, and stuck up for him. It, it makes for good conversation, right? Conversation shouldn't be one way. All right, guys, well, that's it. 
So let me know what you think. Uh, tell me your silver stories. You know, when was that seed first planted? I'm interested to know.